to introduce the Vice President Kamala Harris. And that is not all. If he is reelected, the former president has openly said he intends to weaponize the Department of Justice against his enemies. The hypocrisy abounds. We have just gotten word <gasps> former President Donald Trump has been indicted hmm. by a grand jury in New York. Well, today, the Department of Justice unsealed the historic indictment charging a former president for the first time in history with federal crimes. New charges today concerning the classified documents he took from the White House. Donald Trump is now facing his third criminal indictment. According to a leaked document, the FBI spied on Catholic churches around the Richmond area. The Department of Justice has directed the FBI to use its full authority to investigate any threats targeting school board officials. This just days after a prominent school board association, the National School Board Association, asked the Biden administration for help against parents uh, who are critical of people who work for the school board. This is what the first sounds that Roger Stone woke up to this morning was the FBI pounding on his door and shouting this. I want to just play this for a moment. FBI, open the door. I've said many times, I believe, I think we all at this table believe, nobody should have to go to jail for smoking weed. And what we need to do is recognize that far too many people have been sent to jail for simple marijuana possession. Now, Senator Harris says she's proud of her record as a prosecutor and that she'll be a prosecutor president, but I'm deeply concerned about this record. There are too many examples to cite, but she put over 1,500 people in jail for marijuana violations and then laughed about it when she was asked if she ever smoked marijuana. You ever smoked? I have. Okay. Like and I, and I inhaled. I did, in, I did inhale. inhale. <laughs> Harris oversaw roughly 1,900 marijuana convictions in San Francisco during her time as the city's district attorney, 6% more than her predecessor. Vice President Harris locked up nearly 2,000 people for marijuana-related offenses while she was California's attorney general. She blocked evidence. She blocked evidence that would have freed an innocent man from death row until the courts forced her to do so. She kept people in prison beyond their sentences to use them as cheap labor for the state of California. And she fought to keep cash you, bail system in place that impacts poor people in the worst kind of way. How does that prepare you to be president one day? Well, I think every vice president, I'm the 49th vice president, first one that looks like me. Mm -hmm. <laughs> so maybe people are trying to wrap their heads around that too. <laughs> um, is Every vice president understands the seriousness and the significance of this position, which is to be ready. The president can be one place at one time, doing many things, certainly, at any one time. But the vice president is there to serve as, a, as somebody who can, can be there when the president can't. Sub second place. How much longer will it be for Americans to, to then bring down all prices? So look, because the president's unprecedented actions that he took as it relates to the oil, we saw gas prices go down, which is important at the tank to Americans across the country. Gas prices have been moving steadily higher. And if that trend continued, there would be significant consequences. From an economic perspective, the higher gas prices go, the more damage to inflation. And if there's too much damage to inflation, that could actually delay when the Fed starts cutting interest rates. And I also want to uh, remind you what caused inflation. We know that inflation was caused by supply chains that broke down because of the pandemic, Russia's war in Ukraine. We know that uh, caused uh, uh, oil prices to skyrocket. Our economy was disrupted by so many ways because of the pandemic. That's what caused uh, inflation. Inflation is made in Washington because only Washington can create money. And any other attribution of, to other groups of inflation is wrong. Consumers don't produce it. Producers don't produce it. The trade unions don't produce it. Foreign sheiks don't produce it. Oil imports don't produce it. What produces it is too much government spending and too much government creation of money and nothing else. The uh, former president has said that he wants to debate the president anytime, anywhere, under any conditions with any moderator. Will the president take him up on that? I think it's really funny that Donald Trump keeps saying things from Truth Social when he just stays in the basement of Mar-a-Lago. I don't think he's done 
any campaigning this week while the president's been out there. But look, Major, the president is traveling the country, talking to the voters who will decide this election. We haven't had the conversation about something that may happen in August. But what I can say is the debate plays out every time Joe Biden talks about what he is fighting for and what Donald Trump is fighting for, which is bad, it's rejected, it's toxic, and it's not the American way. Did he lay any concerns that you may have had about his age or his ability to do the job? I was never really concerned uh, with that. I've, I've spent time with, with the president, both in the White House, uh, traveled back with him to my district, spent time with him in the district. Um, it, it always seemed very clear to me that he had the energy uh, and the ability to continue to do this work. You guys are issuing this warning to Iran two days after renewing a waiver that unlocked $10 billion in frozen funds. Don't you think Iran is paying more attention to the actions of this administration than the words? Can't speak for the mullahs or what they're paying attention to or not. Jackie, I would remind that this sanctions waiver is renewed or up for renewal every three months. It's a quarterly thing. Um, it's a sanctions package that was actually put in place by the previous administration, by President Trump and his team, that allows for Iraq to be able to work its way off of Iranian energy uh, so that they can keep the lights on. And we're continuing to work with our Iraqi partners about how to do that. But right now, they still are dependent uh, for a lot uh, of energy from coming from Iran. And so we don't want to penalize the Iraqi people for efforts that they're still trying to get to, to wean off of that. In 2021, you, though, you did say that inflation was transitory. Do you, do you regret saying that now? I regret saying it was transitory. Um, it has come down, but I think transitory means uh, a few weeks or months to most, most people. I really doubt that we're going to see an inflationary cycle. It will have a temporary or transitory impact. The faster than expected increase in some of those prices is actually a good sign. The overwhelming consensus is going to pop up a little bit and then go back down. No one's talking about this great, great deal. This is something that will uh, settle down. Transitory. <laughs> Transitory. <laughs> Most of the price increases we've seen are were expected and are expected to be temporary. It's un highly unlikely that it's going to be long-term inflation that's going to get out of hand. I don't know anybody who's worried about inflation. Over the last couple of months, uh, we actually saw it trended downward. President Biden's chief of staff, Ron Klain, enthusiastically retweeted an economist who had said in part, most of the economic problems we're facing, inflation, supply chains, et cetera, are high class problems. Well, the number one thing that the president can do is help get COVID under control. Uh, that we know is the root cause of inflation. President Biden this afternoon saying he thinks we're at the peak of the crisis right now and that lower prices are on the way. The inflation has everything to do with the supply chain. Make no mistake, inflation is largely the fault of Putin. If you want to get rid of inflation, the only way to do it is to um, re undo a lot of the Trump tax cuts. Our inflation rates are lower than other nations in the world. The inflation we're seeing is due to the pandemic. When inflation hit a new high last week, the administration and President Biden called the numbers out of date. I just want to say a number, zero. Today, we received news that our economy had zero percent inflation. When I hear people talk about inflation, as I heard them there, we have to change that subject. Inflation is a global phenomenon. Kunji Chagalia, 